Hello everyone, my name is Jenny Burak and we're going to talk today about the solar eclipse, new moon coming in Cancer and the lunar eclipse, full moon coming in Aquarius at the end of the month a little bit. We're just going to touch on that because it probably deserves its own video. Um, so I wanted to talk first about what's been going on with me. I kind of feel like the canary in the coal mine <laughs> um, because we talked a little bit the last time I made a video about Venus and Virgo and Venus and Virgo, she's an exaltation in Pisces, but Venus and Virgo is in her fall because it's the opposite of her exaltation and Venus likes to eat good food and drink wine and get dressed up and be really pretty and to like like she likes finesse and sass and and in Virgo you just don't get a whole lot of that you know you need to be precise and watch what you eat and take care of yourself and she can't really express herself fully in the sign of Virgo because Venus and Virgo brings up feelings of being unworthy. You know, Venus is about how we're valued. So I touched a little bit on that in my last video, but that's actually where I'm going to start talking about um, what's been going on with me. So, so um, I don't really talk too much about my own twin flame journey. I did do a video and I, I talked about it a little bit at the same time that uh, something came up with me in regard to that, something pretty big, uh, back in May. So as Uranus sat on my ascendant, which is 29 degrees of Aries, he squared, so he was in a 90 degree angle with Mars in the sky. Mars in the sky was one degree from his exalt, his point of exaltation and conjunct my Mars. I have Mars at the degree of like half a degree and you count that as the degree. Like anytime that you're going, if you're looking at uh, degrees and you get to like 50 or over, then you're going to the next degree, just so you know. So Mars was on my Mars pretty much, and square Uranus on my ascendant. And I was just weeks away from meeting someone who I knew two years ago. I knew his name, uh, but I knew like for sure that this was happening and it was just a few weeks away. And I was really excited. And, you know, Jesus, when he talked to me about it, he was all excited too. And, um, but I just had some, something nagging at me that, that maybe this wasn't what I was expecting it to be and what I was hoping for. And so I said to Metatron, if there's something not in alignment or there's an unbalancing, like a kind of like a codependent energy um, in this relationship and it's not going to be the relationship that I want, then please, can I just skip it? And so I think it was like the next day, it was the, like just before that Uranus Mars square was going to happen. Um, in the evening, I was sitting on my couch minding my own business. And, and then suddenly there were a lot of, uh, a lot of angels and ascended masters around me. So you know when that happens that something's something's gonna go down. <laughs> like something serious. And I could tell by the mood that something had something was up, obviously. Um Metatron told me to hold his hand. And um explained to me that we had talked, um, my twin flame and I had talked and decided that at this time it would be probably a, a huge disappointment for me. And it was just that 
the two of us, it isn't a question of like, did we love each other? It's just that we had different expectations about the relationship. And so I, we had decided our higher selves had decided that we would meet. So, um, I went through the process of basically having him and I want to make sure that you understand that I, I talked about this in the other video that I knew two years ago that I would not meet my twin soul. Uh, but then when you, when that happens, because you know, you, each of you has free will and sometimes this, the other, you know, half of our soul. And I'm going to explain again, for those of you that didn't catch it in that video, what Metatron showed me was like, as we're being created, kind of coming to into existence kind of thing. There's this, it looks like an oval and it looks like an amniotic sac. And inside it are swirling lights, your energy, what you are, your essence, okay? And there's, you know, the white light mixed in there with gold and there's all different colors, but then there's colors of who, like you are, like the color of your soul uh, inside that. And as, as that forms and comes to be, like almost at the same, well, yeah, at the same moment, it's pulled apart. And it becomes two perfectly round spheres. Okay. So, and then we start incarnating. So we don't like incarnate, like that doesn't fuse back together. And then we become a person. Uh, we usually share, we do share like experiences and actions where we are the same person. I know this is hard to understand. Uh, so if we come in as someone like about like 12 times, we come in. Uh, with our twin soul and we like share, he's saying we share the identity. Okay. Of the person. So, um, you don't, when, if you do find out like you're not going to meet your twin soul, that kind of extraction doesn't happen. You're, they're always a part of you. Um, but because, but, and so then if you don't, if the other person doesn't make the turn, what happens is it's like a triangle then. So you're like, it's the twin soul and you're like sharing heart space is what he's saying. Okay. With the other energy that you're going to come in, to, come in, uh, into union with. Okay. So when it was decided that we wouldn't come into union, then there's a release then you're like a, like a disconnection kind of thing in your chakras. It's the best way to put that. And it was literally like ripping, ripping half of me out is what it felt like. And Metatron like literally like fused me back together kind of thing because it was like a, we're sharing energy and then you're not sharing energy with that person any longer. So it was very painful. And I, I let myself cry a lot that day. And, and then after that, I, I did cry. I'm not going to say I, I didn't express any emotion over it. But I, I just was trying to be really logical about it and saying, well, it's for the best. It's for the best. And I'm just kind of pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. I was really busy with work. And uh, here's where I'm going to mention that I, I've talked about it maybe a little bit. But I have a daughter with special needs. And she's diagnosed with something that's like a severe form of autism. And she's completely dependent. And so until I started doing this small scale, <laughs> I was, um, I was, I was her full-time caregiver and I still am her full-time caregiver. So I have that job and then I have this job and then I decided that I would volunteer my time, my free time, my fictional free time to someone else's project. That's something that's close to my heart. And it's something that I wanted to help with. And I really thought, oh, I, I have time for that. And I, I was just trying to, I think, make myself so busy that I didn't deal with the huge emotional loss that I suffered. And so I just kept going down that road. <laughs> uh, literally, my car broke down. Just, you know, like I turned a corner and it, everything went. It was one of those belts that holds everything together. So that was my first clue that things might fall apart. And um, 
yeah, so the car got fixed. It was like, I got a great price. Everything was happy. I was like, oh, I'm just learning trust. And I, I was even messaging, uh, I, you know, Amanda and I, Amanda Ellis and I exchanged messages and I told her, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks later, I said, I don't know what's going on. I can't stop crying. I'm waking up crying. And I really, I really convinced myself that it had nothing to do with that, with what had gone on until finally I ended up sick. And I haven't gotten sick since before I started energy healing classes. Like every time that I feel something coming on, I do the work for it and I'm good. I'm good. I don't have to go to the doctor. I'm, I'm fine. I mean, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. You could do both. Like sometimes the, um, you know, the cure is traditional medicine. So nothing, just nothing wrong with going to the doctor, but I've just never had to. And this time I could tell that it was fierce <laughs> and I made an appointment right away to, with the doctor. So this was just after the full moon in Capricorn. And he pointed out to me that the full moon in Capricorn, he said to put my asteroid Jennifer, the asteroid Jennifer in it. And it was right in there. It was literally like there was the moon Saturn and not much space. And there was Jennifer. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, that was like, he was, he was pointing that out to me because I have Saturn conjunct my ascendant. So Uranus is now between my ascendant on my Saturn, like coming up to my Saturn. There's like not very much space between my Saturn retrograde in Taurus love in the house of self and my Uranus because my lesson that Saturn is teaching me this lifetime is to love myself, Taurus, and to put myself and my needs before the needs of everyone else, okay? So he was pointing out to me, like, you're right in there. And I still didn't, like, oh, that's awesome. You know, I it's it, you know that's the 10th house for my ascendant. So I was like, oh, it'll be something with my career. And that did happen, actually, too. There was exposure. Um, so that was good. But in the meantime, I, I felt like something very big coming on. I went to the doctor, got a prescription. It did absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Then I had to start like arranging, rearranging the schedule. And I, my voice went like, I mean, it was like everything, all systems break down. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I had to explain to the woman who I had volunteered to do work for that I just no longer had that time in my schedule. And I, you know, set some boundaries for myself. If Saturn retrograde, if you have that, that's a lot about like where we don't have boundaries and we're just kind of taking it on for everyone else. So I did that. My voice came back. So that was good. But I just continued to get more sick. Anyway, I was, I was down for like 10 days, 10 days. So things fell behind. People, you know, were, are waiting for recordings still. And all of my clients were, I really appreciate, again, thank you to everyone. Because I think that most people, when they sign up for an appointment with me, understand that the healing is going to happen within divine timing. It doesn't matter if I'm sick or not. I mean, whenever you get the recording, whenever you have your session booked, that's, that's exactly when it's supposed to happen. Otherwise, you know, I mean, the universe knew that I was going to be sick. Um, so everybody was really understanding about that. But anyway, and I'm still catching up. I reworked my schedule so that I'm, you know, seeing clients or talking to clients within a, a, a more like confined uh, time period because uh, Metatron's really wanting me to expand like my videos and doing social media things and then offering like healings like uh, that I can just have people download from Vimeo when you know enough about your chart that you know you have a problem with this or with that. And you don't even really have to know that much about your chart when you have an issue with worthiness. It's going to have something to do with Venus, maybe Jupiter, you know, that could be abundance and be having plenty and all of that stuff. So so anyway, I needed to free up some time to be able to do that and then time to schedule for myself. So, you know, that's that's a huge part of the Venus and Virgo story. Not everyone has Venus in the sixth house. Not everyone has Venus and Virgo, but everyone has everyone. Big shock. 
everyone has an issue with worthiness, okay? And that's how, it, and it's playing out in some way in your natal chart. It shows like how, why it started, um, how it came to be that you have these feelings or, you know, that you have to be in service to others. Pretty much everyone has that story, okay? Especially if you're in this, if you're listening to this, you've got a, you've got a service contract is what he's saying. There's something that's not in balance. And Uranus is the physical body. He's in Venus' sign of, of Taurus. But Venus also rules Libra, okay? And Libra is about balance. Taurus is the physical body. It happens to be in my first house. And so my Saturn is like, put yourself first, take care of yourself, show yourself that you love yourself by making time for you, time, Saturn, love, Taurus, and Uranus is coming, that, that tornado <laughs> that sets us free from our karmic sentence, okay, is coming to my Saturn and Uranus is like, oh, look, this is an imbalance. Let me just take care of that. Shazam. She's she's down for 10 days. Okay. <laughs> so I did work on why I needed to have like such a big knockdown, obviously. But um, anyway, that's what happened to me. So just know that this time period, it's crucial, he's saying, crucial that you begin to see yourself as the light of God incarnated on this planet. You're a spark of God. You are the glory of God in a human body. Okay? Now treat yourself that way. Okay? That's my um, my tale of uh, my, my warning, I guess I would say. So, I mean, obviously everybody doesn't have Uranus hitting their Saturn, okay? But everyone has Uranus and Taurus. And so things that are out of balance and out of whack they're going to they're going to make themselves apparent like it's going to come up to be dealt with okay so that's my story um and so i want to continue talking about venus and virgo oh i also wanted to explain that's why in the last video i didn't get too much into venus and virgo because that was a day that i cried literally up to the video till the makeup was on Okay, and then I would just tell myself, like, don't cry, don't cry. And <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't have made the video that day. Like, obviously, it was not a good day for me to be doing that. I, I could have been just, you know, asked, finding out, like, what's going on. But no, I had to get that video done. You know, Mars at the degree of exaltation, <laughs> I had to, like, I was doing it. It didn't matter what happened. So I, I, I started that recording, like, 12 times. It was ridiculous. So... So in the, when that happens, then I don't remember exactly what I said in the one that's recording now because I'm thinking back to one three videos ago, but I didn't say a whole lot about Venus and Virgo um, because I, yeah, I was so, in a, I was in such an emotional state. So anyway, I was being, I was being of service, but, um, but yeah, I didn't talk a whole lot about it, but when Venus now... He's, Venus is actually with the asteroid Ceres. Ceres is a, is where we get the, the term cereal, okay? She's about bringing the bounty, bringing the harvest in. Um, it's how we nourish ourselves, how we were nourished in a natal chart. Uh, I did a healing for someone today. Actually, in the last couple of days, I've done healings with Ceres because that can be like a story that we're carrying in our DNA about a famine, uh, not having enough food, like where you have those feelings like, you know, am I going to run out of something? Like Because it's happened to you. So that's what Ceres is about. So when you're talking about diet in Virgo, I'm not saying go on a diet, okay? What we're trying to get away from is sacrificing something right now because Venus in Virgo is about sacrifice. And, and we know that we don't need to sacrifice anything, okay? So it's still obviously everything in moderation. But if there is some issue with your diet, okay, with what you're putting into yourself as the vessel of God incarnated on the planet, as the human in the human body, if there is something out of balance with that, then this is a time to address it. This is a perfect time, by the way, 
especially with the energy of uh, what's happening, you know, in cancer. Cancer is like the kitchen and it's also about food, uh, the moon, nurturing and nourishing yourself. That's going to be, um, this is going to be a great time to change that that part of your diet where you're, you know, like I always had the thing where I would give my kids all of these healthy options for dinner and then I just have whatever. You know, I made sure that they had their vegetables, they had their greens, they had their fruits, they had everything they needed, but I didn't really, I didn't take care of that for myself at all. So anyway, with the new moon, this is a good time to start a new way of taking care of yourself. And then also, we're all dealing with, collectively now, uh, our sense of security, okay? This is where, emotionally, we're all being rocked. Because that Capricorn Cancer access is about the firm foundation and the nest, the sense of security that you feel at home. Cancer is the mother, the moon, how we were nurtured. So if you have, let's say, a placement like, uh, for instance, my daughter, my daughter, telling on myself a little bit here because obviously her moon relates to me. Um, one of my children has, uh, my daughter, I already said, but one of my daughters has um, the, the Uranus, okay, in her fourth house, which is basically the energy of having like a moon in Aquarius. So, you know, Uranus, it's not about like connection and being held softly, okay? It's abrupt and it's, it's something that you can't count on. There's no security there. So, and that happened with her um, just because of the way that she chose to come in 12 months before her sister who, you know, had it needed a lot more of me. And she was only one, you know, and I mean, we've done that work because I told her, like, you gave yourself a really, a lot to deal with, feeling like you're not loved by your mother, like you can't. You don't have that emotional security with her. There's always things about your kids' moons as an astrologer. You're just like, oh. <laughs> but you know what? Guess what? Mothers make mistakes. Or we think we did, but we really are fulfilling a contract that we signed up for. So if you have that moon in Aquarius or everybody has a moon issue, again, this is not a shock to anybody. This is all coming up for us now, okay, because of everything that's happening in Cancer the sun moving up to oppose Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto, you know, death and transformation of structure of the foundation. Uh, talk That's speaking to like where we've given away our own authority. You know, who makes the decisions in your relationship? Do you ever say, you know what, I think, I think I'd like to do this. Do you want to come along with me? Like try that sometime. Make the suggestion and decide that you're going to do it even if it's alone. And see if your partner joins in. You know what I'm saying? Like little things like that. Like this is what I'm making for dinner tonight, but I understand if you'd rather have something else. But this is what I'd like to have and I'm preparing this for dinner. Maybe just don't ask what the person wants for dinner. Maybe make the suggestion. You know, this is the, this is the transformation of the patriarchy. Saturn, Capricorn. Okay, this is this is where the patriarchy transforms and becomes equal. This is Pluto and Capricorn, and the, but the sun moving up to oppose that it rattles us all. Okay, we've all got issues of insecurity where we weren't something some emotional need wasn't met, and we feel that emptiness. That's why there's all this talk about I want to go home. You are home. Your energy. Just like when you have a dream and you, you see yourself in a house and you see people, maybe some people that you don't even have a close relationship with here, but for some reason in this dream, they happen to be intimately connected to you and the house doesn't look like your house, but you know it's your house. That's you somewhere else showing yourself what's happening there, okay? You're not just, let's get out of the human concept of, of time and space Time is happening all at the same time, okay? Time is not linear. So you're seeing yourself playing other roles in other places. You're not just here, okay? When you, you're, you know, you were created maybe somewhere else, how do you know that you don't go there, that you're not there right now? How do you know that, okay? 
So your sense of security, your feeling of being safe at home, it's, uh, yeah, feeling threatened is what he's saying. That's what everyone's going through that. You get that fear, like, I'm not safe. And I, I think a lot of it, too, is being, you know, grounded here. We can feel what's had the shifts coming to the earth. And so we're feeling a little bit shaky, like where's the ground? Where's the where's the anchor? Where's the foothold? The best way to deal with that, because you've got also on this at the same time, you've got Neptune trying Jupiter. So that's like that getting carried away off and you've got the sun, you know, in cancer and, you know, everybody's making trines to that as they pass through cancer. So that's all that floating away energy and it's where we're emotionally getting carried away because it's all happening in water. And our sense of security is not based, we don't have, like if you if you had the mother who was perfect, okay, and who fed your every emotional need, then you're not experiencing this. But if you ever had a lifetime where your emotional needs were not met, you don't know what that feels like. You don't know that what that feels like because the story that you're carrying in your physical body, in your DNA, and in all of your bodies, your subtle bodies, your energy bodies, they don't know what that feels like. So I don't remember like the last time I did a healing that it wasn't addressing these issues and then removing that story and installing the new story of what it is to feel emotionally secure, to know that you're held to know that you're nurtured, and to be able to trust that, to trust that. If you have like a, you know, a placement like that where you're, you know, your moon, it, people call it the wounded moon. I mean, I, I, you'd be hard pressed to find one that isn't wounded in some way, honestly, but that's what you're seeking out in other people. That's why you want to go home, you know, and it's not inside anybody else and it's not on another planet. It's, it's just healing that story. It's, it's changing that wound into something that's healed and then finding that sense of emotional fulfillment within yourself. So what Metatron has been stressing to me ever since that full moon in Capricorn, really, about what's going to happen the 12th and the 13th with this uh, new moon that we have coming is that this new moon is the most blessed energy of fertility that he said, like in, in our lifetimes, you know, we'd be hard pressed to find more, you know, something that has more energy of things coming to fruition than this, than the event that's coming. We've got um, the sun and the moon opposing 20 degrees of cancer, opposing Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is on its south node, by the way, its own south node, just like the nodes of the moon, the north node and the south node that we talk about. Those are the nodes of the moon. But Pluto is on its own south node. And I can't remember now how many hundreds of years that happens. It's not like a typical thing. Okay. So collectively, yeah, how that's going to play out in government and, and what he said to me that also didn't make it to the last video about the Mars retrograde is that the Mars retrograde will rock the foundations of the world, both geopolitically and geophysically. That's what he said. That's collectively. Okay. So we, we know like obviously the system, the way it is, it's, it's so broken. I don't care what country you're in, uh, but it, it can't continue the way that it's going. We need to have the ashes before we get to the Phoenix rising. Right. But but individually, Pluto in Capricorn, you know, Pluto rules the water sign of Scorpio in Capricorn. That's that mud, that perfect soil that you need to plant a seed. Okay. You've got the moon, the magic of the moon, the moon in, in its home of cancer. And it's, it's pulling in the energy of Jupiter, which by the way, at the time of this new moon, Jupiter will be stationary direct. That is the most energy when a planet is stationary direct. 
That is all of that Jupiter blessings and gifts and abundance and plenitude, okay? That is feeding into this new moon. And then you've got Neptune on the other side of it, okay? Neptune, like infinite possibilities. The dream that, you've, that you fantasize about, that you imagine that someday, somehow, and then time gets away from you and a decade goes by and you, or you have kids or you have the husband and you just, oh, think about that. That is possible. Anything is possible. You are a powerful creator and a powerful manifester. And every time you have a thought, that thought is an energy and it creates your future. That story that you're telling yourself, that is what's happening, okay? Change the story. Make a wish on a star, this new moon. You could write it on a piece of paper and burn the paper and leave it on the ground for the universe. You could just say, this is what I would like to happen. Whatever, whatever can come to me as help from my soul family, I am asking my angels and my guides to, and all the beings of light that I have on my team to help me bring this to fruition, okay? Help me to, to bring my divine timing into fruition. I'm ready now. I'm ready. That's all they're waiting for. And it isn't that they're going to tell you what you, you need to do. You know what you need to do. It's just the story that, well, that won't work because of this. No, no, no. We're going to eclipse that story right out of here on this eclipse. And we're going to see ourselves at the finish line. See what it looks like, the end product of what you want to create. You know, I had a woman today who was talking about writing. And Metatron said, in, in writing a screenplay, and Metatron said, visualize the final product. Like, visualize the red carpet screening of that movie. Whatever it is that's in your heart that would bring you joy and will bring you fulfillment, don't worry about how the finances are going to work out. That's not your, that's not your business, okay? You've got Jupiter, plenitude, abundance, infinite, infinite possibilities of expansion and and just imagine what you could create don't waste this new moon energy don't waste it put that put your energy into making that happen okay and all you have to do to do that is to say make an make a way okay create the way show me the path remove the resistance i or no i'm sorry they are not going to like do anything like that for you you say i remove any and all resistance to this. What Metatron had to me say is, uh, I surrender to the process of my own transformation. I surrender to the process of my own transformation. Okay? And just, just see that. See the shackles fall. See everything, every excuse that you've ever told yourself just see that going into the light of creation and dissolving, and that's it. It's done, okay? No more resistance. So I thought that that was, that was an awesome message. And he also was talking about, you know, it's at, it's at 12 minutes, or I'm sorry, no, it's at, it's at 48 minutes past the hour, wherever you are in the world. So it's happening for Central Standard Time in the United States. I didn't write it down. Shoot. I look at so many different time zones, but it's 48 minutes past the hour. I think it's 9.48 p.m. Yes, it's 9.48 p.m. Central Standard Time. So this will be like early in the morning in Europe, but it's happening at 48 minutes past the hour. So the number 12 relates to the 12th house. That's Neptune. And it's about manifesting and creating your own destiny. And then one and two together is the three. That's the Trinity. So you've got the blessings of those energies, too. And then uh, on the 14th, so that's the 12th, 13th, on the 14th, then Venus in Virgo, who wants precision and accuracy, and she's not going to waste her time, you know, putting her heart and soul into something that's not going to come to fruition. She is going to have a conversation on the 14th with Saturn. Saturn brings permanence and stability and a foundation. So it's, it's really like off the charts. Awesome. Like I said, like collectively, you know, what he was saying was everyone's talking about the, oh, 
that's not the, our focus, okay? Whatever's going to happen collectively and however earth changes are going to play out, that's going to happen. I did um, the video, the meditation of putting the, the tetrahedron like underneath your house um, and then different places around the, the earth. If you want to go back and look at that video, because it is, it is, you know, good to ask for protection for, you know, individual places where we live. I don't, you know, obviously, um, to make sure that, you know, you're, you feel safe and that your family's safe. You can also just say, I'd like protection, please, uh, from Metatron or from whoever, you know, God, however you want to say that. Um, but yeah, otherwise we're just focusing on what we want to create and without giving into all of this fear and things that are happening right now. So then on the, the 19th, 20th, but you'll feel the build up to this. He's saying the 17th, uh, the sun is going to move into an opposition with Lilith. Okay. And this will happen as the moon goes into Scorpio. So this is something with, you know, Lilith is the legend of Lilith is that she was in the garden of Eden, found out that she had to be subservient to Adam and checked out. Okay. That's the myth of Lilith. So that's our independent streak. Okay. That's the woman who wants equality, who's not going to say no, you know, who's going to say, no, I don't kowtow to anyone. I'm my own authority. I get to say, I get to say the sun is the representation of the divine masculine. You know, the sun and the moon are the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So that's some kind of an opposition. So I don't know how that's going to play out collectively, but we already talked about individually, like standing in your own authority. That's what this Pluto and Capricorn is about and Saturn and Capricorn. It's, it's you coming to the realization like, oh yeah, they're not in charge. Metatron's not, I don't need to wait for marching orders from him. I can ask him for help. Actually, they're just waiting for you to ask for help. That's all they're doing. They know what, what it is that you want to create. Just they're waiting for you to have the courage to ask for the help and to take the step forward. You know, even if it's just ordering a business card, that's a step. Anything is a step. Anything towards your goal. I don't care how little the step is. I don't care if it's making a phone call or sending an email to find out about things. That's still taking a step. And I'll tell you from personal experience that once you take that step, that first scary, scary step, uh, for me it was, the universe is going to meet you more than halfway. And especially with these energies, you're going, it's going to happen. Just see it happening, visualize it. This is what I want. And that's what's going to happen. So, and then the next day, so that's the 19th when we're talking about Lilith. And then it can also be like a rocky thing with women. Like maybe not a good day to talk to your female boss. I mean, I'm not singling out female bosses, but that's Lilith and Capricorn. Um, and the moon in Scorpio, that's also female. So uh, then Venus, the next day, will come into an uncomfortable aspect with Neptune, okay? And Neptune, and then the moon will be with Jupiter. And the sun is in the last degrees, so very emotional, of Cancer, okay? So that's like the 19th, 20th. Just want to give you a heads up where, you know, we might like snap at somebody who tells us what to do. Uh, just, you know, a lot of deep breathing that day, a lot of deep breathing. Um, I'm just amazed. I posted it on Facebook too, and I try to stay away from this stuff as much as possible, but I cannot get over how many white people are calling the police on black people. I mean, women, now men have joined the game. It's just like he, like Metatron talked about with that Libra full moon where the light and the dark, the opposite, like the duality is like screaming, you know, screaming at us. And I know there are a lot more people that don't feel like that. It's just that the darker, the darker energies like attention is what he just said. They like attention. So, yeah, I mean, so th that's the kind of energy that we're looking at, like the 19th, 20th kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to see how that's going to play out collectively. Um, I wanted to say, too, about that that uh, new moon, what's happening. He had me look at England. Um, a lot of stuff going on in the 12th house for both, both of the events with the eclipses in July. There's another one coming, don't forget, August 10th. So, but yeah, a lot of it's going out, going on in the 12th house of hidden things. And then that's also uh, the 12th house of spirit. I think I mentioned earlier that Uranus is on the queen mother's son. 
and it's going to go back again and you know back into Aries and come back over her sun again so it's made its first pass already but um but yeah so and then you know it's also even when this stuff is going on with our elected or I'm not gonna say that with our uh representative in from the United States going to England uh yeah that'll be stuff going on behind closed doors that maybe everybody wouldn't be so thrilled to find out but anyway that's what's happening with that uh, for England. Uh, and then the 22nd, the sun moves to Leo. And then we're back to what I was talking about before with Mercury. Mercury's there till, well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll go into that a little bit later. But Mercury, you know, entered Leo. And then I talked about how he's kind of doing this wrap up uh, with the North Node there. It's been almost 18 months. Since the North Node moved into Leo, he's he's just got like five, at this point, like six degrees left until he moves then into Cancer. But with the North Node in Leo, Leo is your creativity. It's your sun. Whatever, wherever your sun is, the, the ruler of your sun is the, the constellation of Leo rules the sun. And Leo is about shining and being like, here I am, world. Here, let's do this. You know, and so whatever like you have inhibitions about shining, that stuff's all going to be coming up now, too, because you're, you know, you're saying like, I'm ready to create. I'm ready to do it. So just just know that when you when you say that there could be like a little bit of a push to move outside of your comfort zone, you know, so give yourself room to do that and, and give yourself be, just say like, I know I remember how to do this. Because your your higher self knows what the future is going to be, and that's part of that seeing it the pro, the finished product. You're remembering your future. It's very possible to do that. By the way, you just visualize it and you just ask for you know insights and for help, and then you see it and you you shine and you be exactly who you are, who your authentic self is, and that's how that's where where you're going to create from that kind of energy. So then we've got the sun moving into Leo on the 22nd. Uh, Mercury then will reach his degree of um, retrograde on the 23rd. And then he's going to sit there for a few days moving, but he's going real slowly. Okay, so Mercury is set up for his retrograde as Venus on the 24th opposes Neptune. So Venus in Virgo, she's looking for value, okay? She's all about the bargain and she's, she wants to be, he said she's using discretion. So when you look at it in an opposition to Neptune, this could be a stuff with the love relationship where maybe it was in the shadows and it comes out, uh, or something about the dream that maybe you need to, to, uh, what am I trying to say to like, you know, finesse a little bit or, you know, give a little bit of help to, uh, it can also be just ideas that come to you. And then the next day, the sun will square Uranus. So that's a removal energy. So if it's something that's not in alignment, especially when I'm talking about that love relationship, uh, aspect of Venus, the next day, the sun squaring Uranus, it will probably be like a, you know, a release. Um, it's a letting go is what he's saying. So, you know, that's another, what we were talking about with Uranus and Taurus many times is this is about letting go. And, you know, the, the letting go of the illusion that we have control over anyone other than ourselves. And, you know, I mean, I, I talk to a lot of people lately who are starting to really question the marriage. And that's okay. That's okay. I mean, soulmates come together, uh, like when I put my ex-husband and my chart together with his, it said that we were, it said actually it was a Vedic interpretation. It said that I owed him children and to help him find his fortune because that was our contract and that's what happened. We had three children. He started making a lot of money and about six months later, I had to file for divorce. <laughs> so it happened exactly, what do you know? That was our contract fulfilled. Who knew? So, you know, that's where, like, if you're getting that this is not in balance, that this is no, no bueno, then that sun square Uranus is going to give you a push to let it go. Or maybe the person goes, their decision. But we'll see. I mean, obviously it's going to play out differently for everyone. 
Uh, then on the 26th, Mercury will start moving backward. And this is, remember, right before that uh, full moon event that we have coming in Aquarius with the lunar eclipse, Mercury is is going to be moving backwards then. He's going to move backwards until the 20th of August. He will not clear his shadow until September 2nd. So he's still got more time in Leo to help you create stuff. He's still going to be there in Leo. He'll just be at the, not even like clo that close to the end, maybe a week away from clearing uh, Leo. So that's plenty of time to put things, you know, your creative genius to work. And I'll remind everyone what Metatron said about uh, the retrograde energies, because a lot of people are getting sidetracked with that. Oh, everything's, we're going backwards, or we're, you know, we got to work four times harder. Um, no, retrograde, what Metatron says is there's never, it's never the wrong time to do the right thing. And so just trust that as you plant that seed, that this is stuff like, you know, you've had these ideas and these dreams for a long time. So planting the seed now for them to come to fruition, it's not like something is just going to pop into your mind. It might. I mean, it might. It is an eclipse, by the way. So that can happen, too. Now, then on the 27th, when we when we're talking about that full moon coming in Aquarius, that is on the Mars South Node conjunction. And the sun and the moon are at four degrees and 44 minutes. That's a huge nod to Uranus. So just expect, you know, I've been saying too, when Metatron was talking to me about, you know, well, he likes to tell me it's time to get off my ass <laughs> because I'm a Scorpio. So I can be a little resistant to things. And, you know, I'm going to tell again something about my natal chart. Uh, my Leo moon is in my fourth house, which is ruled by cancer, and my sun in Scorpio already, in the shadows, deep in the shadows of Scorpio, my Scorpio is intercepted. So I wanted to make sure that I was all about everybody else and I wasn't going to shine. So, you know, it was really difficult for me to take the first step to doing this. And that's what, you know, and then I started doing it and I love it. I actually love it. I look forward to it. And that's what, you know, he kept saying, like, it's time to break out of your comfort zone. It's time to start something new. He's saying, uh, and trust the magic of new beginnings. That's what he's saying right now. So when we're talking about that full moon coming, that is just a huge releasing energy. You've got Venus, we'll try and Pluto. Uranus is answering to Venus. Mars is answered to Uranus, Mars on the south node with that moon and eclipse right on top of it. And he, you know, I always thought that when he talked to me about like stuff that was going to go on this year and I looked at the planets and the energies, I said, what am I going to say about this? Like I wanted him to pretty up the story for me. And he said, these are the energies that bring down kingdoms. So I'm just going to keep reminding everyone of that. And that's not just, a, that's like the patriarchy in your own little world, and that's the patriarchy worldwide, too. You know, it's time for some old beliefs, some old programs, some old stories that we've got about, like, not being able to just do what we want, okay? Those days are gone. That's all done now. It's time to start creating from a place of authenticity, something that brings us fulfillment, that brings us joy. Like I said, if you're worried about like the money thing, just trust and know that that will fall into place. The universe is ready for you to bring the gifts of the cosmos, Uranus, into the earth, Taurus. Everybody's waiting to see what kind of cosmic creativity you have to bring. And everybody has something to bring. There's something that you can do. I know it's cliche. There's something that you can do. There's a gift inside of you that no one else has on this planet at this moment. And everyone's waiting to see what it's going to what's what it's going to look like. Everyone wants to see you shine. You have so much backup right now. So yeah, Venus and trying to Pluto, that will be again, that's a transformational energy about like how we're valued. And so even with that full moon, with that releasing, it's going to be something that's, you know, for the best, something that we're going to release. And that's why I'm running my uh, special through August, the end of August, because the Mars South Node conjunction 
is going on, you know, Mars is, is retrograde until August 28th. And when it started its retrograde, it was with the south node. So it's carrying that energy. And Mars is the sign of self, Aries. And it's the lower energies of that. So it's where we're letting go. Yeah, we're shedding our old skin to show our pretty new, fresh skin. Okay, seeing ourselves as the glory of God. Inhabiting a human body, having a human experience. That's who you are. That's who you really are. You're not like the actions or the experiences that have happened to you or that you've you've committed you are the glory of God incarnated on the planet and when we have those difficult relationships with our mother with our father they're always reflecting back to us what we think we're worth and what we believe that God thinks that we're worth everyone's always reflecting that back to you and it's always a case of something that you did in your past life when you were that mother when you were that father that you aren't forgiving yourself for, okay? Where you believe the story that you failed as a parent in some way or you failed God in some way. So if you've had those experiences, the, the elixir, the cure-all is forgiveness. Forgive yourself for what has gone on that someone did to you. Forgive yourself for doing that to someone else. And that's the magic. That's how it happens. That's how the release comes. It's just the energy of forgiveness. And you can you don't need a healer even to be with you. You can just allow the energy of forgiveness, feel it flowing over you, feel it flowing through you, and just trust that all of that is going into the light of creation. And it's done. That's all you have to do is to forgive it and forgive yourself for your participation in it because we're just exchanging roles, okay? That's why the stories go on in the family for so many generations, just like they... You know, they changed it, and the King, the King James guys changed it. The sins of the Father are passed down through the generations. The stories are in your DNA, okay? When you weren't, when you were abandoned or when you were rejected, and now you don't have that sense of security. Forgive yourself for perpetuating the story, and that's all you have to do for that to end. So what else was I going, I want to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. So yeah, that sale is still going on on the website and I'm definitely going to be, you know, more active <laughs> with videos and things like that now that I've changed my schedule around. And again, I want to thank everyone who's waiting for a recording. It's coming. Just know that everything happens in perfect divine timing. I'm being really careful with my schedule and uh, you're going to get that healing exactly when it's meant to be with you. And somebody, you know, a lot of people obviously believe mm -hmm. that it's at the time of the full moon that we, we do the releases and the healing. And that's true. But this Mars South Node conjunction is about releasing. Okay. It doesn't matter if it happens to fall on the new moon. The energy of creation that made the planets is more powerful. Okay. It knows when it's time for things to release. And that happens mm -hmm. if we all if we all waited just for the energies of a full moon, we'd all be still really wounded right now. But anyway, so okay, so if you have any questions, that's another thing. I know that there are a lot of uh, inquiries made on the website that I just haven't had time to get to. I will I will get to it. So send me an email at Jenny B at astrology for ascension .com if you have a question. Uh, and what else? My website is Astrology for Ascension. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. I'm still like pretty baby new on YouTube and I've got over 600 subscribers. So I'm pretty excited about that. And um, yeah, if you're interested in learning more about the energy of Archangel Metatron, if you've ever had a relationship in your you know, before these days with the Holy Spirit, that's the energy of Metatron. You already know him. Uh, you're not any less close to Metatron than I am. He's inside each of us just waiting for you to take notice and ask for his help. And, um, or, you know, Amanda Ellis has a course, uh, the Metatron Level 1 course. She has other courses available too. But that's a great way to get to know the energy of Metatron. And Metatron helps you to, if you didn't have that father energy, that, that reliable father who gave you the foundation that you needed, then he's the cure for that too because he has a very fatherly, loving energy. And I've shared before that when I took Metatron's level one course with Amanda, I felt that for the first time. 
And I've been talking, like hearing him since I was 12, okay? Probably before that, but didn't know. But yeah, so I mean, and I, that was, so that was a lot of years that have gone by since then, but it still gave me a huge gift in that. So wherever you are with him, that's where he's going to meet you. And so, yeah, everybody take care, hang in there. Don't waste this new moon energy. It's magic. It's fertile. It's everything that you want coming to fruition on this planet, creating the life that you want. That's what we're here for, right? That's how we change the world. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Take care.